Dude, you suck, you suck at making at cars, man. Why, Why even, even bother? bother? Unsubscribing. Unsubscribing. Can fix cars. What a wanker. What a hoto. Hurry the fuck up, mate. Chop, chop, chop. I'm tired of waiting, waiting. No, no sorry, it's not how they look at Give up, son. Get a proper job. Daddy, do mushrooms. Dad, I like my steaks better. Ya, mejor firmaré los papeles para el divorcio. You think you can fix cars? Really? Dude, you can't even fix a sandwich. 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 All right, kids, let's go make sandwiches. What? You know how to make sandwich? Be quiet, man! Don't tell me that stuff. Hey guys, it's been a while. It's your boy FreeMad C2. And sorry for the emo intro, but it's just how I felt for lagging for the past few months. Um, I promised before I went to vacation that I would get you guys new REW content, but that didn't happen. I have no excuses for that. I know I dropped the ball on my end, but uh, a vacation was definitely needed and it was overdue. So I went from Mexico. I went to Spain. I went to Rome. where I had to cut my vacation pretty short. And I got back just in time for 7 stop 22. <laughs> and to redeem myself i got a modification that has been bugging me for months and that is modifying the stock rx8 oil pedestal you can find this post on the rx8club.com website which is actually recommended and written by bonsai racing themselves even though the instructions are enough to complete the modification I want to go into detailed steps and record in a POV form to help out future REW projects. I am not taking any credit for this and all credit goes to Bonsai Racing. Thank you again Bonsai Racing for providing this to us and I will leave a link to the original instructions below. Alright guys, it's POV time. We're back here in my garage. I got my fake GoPro chest strap. I bought it on eBay where I can mount my iPhone to my chest. So I could go POV mode. So let me take you over to my workbench where I can show you all of the parts and tools that you're gonna be needing for this modification. All right, so let me break down what's on my workbench right now. It may look overwhelming, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's start off with the actual oil pistol that you're gonna be grinding down and modifying. So this is the OEM RX-8 oil pedestal. You're gonna be modifying this area, the top part of it, to port match what's on the REW motor. You're gonna also be needing the original RX-8 oil pedestal gasket, um, REW oil pedestal. So these two are just for uh, mock-up purposes. So hopefully you have this still. Um, a Dremel, because we're gonna be grinding. Dremel bits. I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna be using. I grabbed whichever one that was that looked good at Home Depot. I think it's this one that I'm gonna be using right here. Sharpie, exacto knife, like a pencil and picks to etch it out um, the area that we're gonna be grinding. Um, gasket, we're not gonna be able to use the OEM gasket anymore, so we gotta make our own. Um, hollow punch set, this is gonna be used to make perfect circles in the gasket, the new gasket for the uh, bolts for the oil pedestal. 
construction paper to make mock up the gasket, place to cut, uh, a vice clamp, table vice clamp to hold down the oil pedestal when you're grinding down. Last but not least, a hammer. This is my hammer and it gets the job done. Just mind how small it is. <laughs> so this is what Bonsai Racing found. A lot of the RX-8 customers that they have that did the REW motors were getting oil starvation. And they noticed that they were using the original oil pedestal. So upon inspection, they found out that this hole right here wasn't port matching to what's on the REW motor. So if you don't port match, this is actually 50% blocking oil passage to the motor. Now there's actually another option to, instead of modifying the original oil pedestal, there is a adapter that you can buy that just basically runs a AN fitting all the way to an external uh, oil filter. And the reason why I didn't go that route is because of my budget. I I'm sure that's much simpler than this, but this is cost wise and cost beneficial to me. So if it sounds like you, you're in the same boat as me with the budget wise, I highly recommend this way, or if not, I'll leave the link in the description below to where you can find those external adapters to uh, mount an external oil filter to the, your setup. All right, so that's, <laughs> that's enough explanation from me. Let's go ahead and get to work. That's freaking funny. So after opening up my hood and taking a look at the motor, I noticed that I need to remove uh, those OEM pipings on the top of the motor in order to get to the oil pedestal area, which is right around there. And I noticed that the OMP pump lines also are on the way as well. I mean, not on the way, but aesthetic wise, and my OCD is kicking in, it's telling me to remove it. So I'm definitely thinking that's going to be part two of this video. So right now, let's go ahead and remove those OEM pipes on the top of the motor. Dude, I had to take a second and step back and just mesmerize on this motor. Like, literally removing those pipes showed 1.3 of sexiness. Oh. You could like literally lick it and eat off of it, man. But back to the installation. <laughs> we have enough room now to modify or make our gasket now for the for the oil pedestal. But I do have a concern for that slave cylinder. It might be in the way, but we'll see. So the plan here now is to get an impression of the mating part of the oil pedestal. So I'm gonna apply tape, apply pressure where the holes are, peel off the tape, transfer it over to uh, construction paper, and then hopefully the holes are still appearing on the tape, and then I could cut it out and whatnot and make a template. As you can see, you can see like the indentation of the holes and the mating part of the oil pedestal. We're gonna transfer that over to the construction paper and hopefully I can stencil that out and make a template of the OEM mating part and then we'll modify it from there. So I already transferred the tape to my construction paper and then I started uh, stenciling it out with a pencil, which is a bad idea. So I found a pen and I'm gonna redo it. So I'm gonna do it on video so you guys can see. All right guys, I marked where I'm going to be grinding. As you can see, where it's sharpied in, it's literally near the edge, right there. Um, 
So if you do go over on your gasket, try to match what I have right here. But it should literally be just like this. So I'm not grinding straight down. I'm going to grind diagonally. So it's going to go towards like that. All right guys, so this is it in all its glory. I think it came out really well. And I went with this piece right here. Part number is 9903 on the Dremel section at Home Depot. Yeah, came out really good. So pretty much next up is making the gasket for this. I completely forgot one step that I need to show you guys. And that step is, what do you do with this template that you just created? So this template here is just used to sharpie in the area that you need to be grinding off. So I wanted to cover this before I start making the custom gasket. So let me explain what I'm trying to do. Um, initially, I tried to go with my tape technique, but that did not work. So I found another solution where you dip oil on the area that you want to make the gasket and press it on the gasket, uh, gasket paper and it'll make an impression like this. So try not to, so this one I put like a little dab of oil, but it didn't come out great. This one a little bit more and this one uh, more and more. <laughs> And it came out better, as you can see on the uh, camera. So I'm going to use this one to make the gasket. So this is the part where the hollow press, hollow punch set comes in handy. So I'm gonna determine which hole or which punch works on this. So it looks like this basically. Let me see if I can find the actual size. Uh, this one's a little small. Could be this one. Yeah, that looks about right. So Looking at it now, looks like it's a 3 8 hole right there. So that's where my small hammer comes into place. So pretty much I'm just gonna line it up like this. So I got the holes out. I think it might be a little bit too big. I should have went with the 5 16 but let's cut it out and uh, give it a try. All right, casket's officially done. Um, as you saw from the time lapse, 
I definitely needed to uh, keep modifying it until it matched the hole properly, but I'm still gonna be putting a light dab of silicone on both sides to, to have that good proper seal. So there, yeah, we got the gasket made. So let's go ahead and get it installed. So I'm actually having two issues, uh, test fitting the oil pedestal. So if I add it, if I put it there, it's actually hitting this white piece right here. So I gotta grind that down in order to have clearance. And second, let me remove this. The slave cylinder line is actually on the way. So I'm gonna grind this down now. All right, so I grinded that plastic piece even more. The oil pedestal now fits. However, it's now hitting the slave line even more. So I'm going to bend that further back. gave me an idea. I was able to bend it a little bit more so it looks like that now. Um, don't be afraid to bend that. Um, that has a lot of flexibility to it but it's pretty strong. So that's pretty much the angle you want to get and of course when you grind that plastic piece down you have that pedestal will now fit. So I only got two options and the first one is the most easiest one where I remove the slave cylinder and bolt on the pedestal. Or two, I use the pedestal, um, kind of snake it in with a 10 millimeter bolt, long bolt, and use a nut to bolt it underneath. Um, that's the most jankiest way, but that's how actually the original oil pedestal came out, which is kind of weird. So I'm going to remove the slave cylinder and be done with it, guys. Well guys, that was, I'm not gonna lie, that was a pain in the ass to install this oil pedestal. It's finally installed, as you can see, but I had to remove that slave cylinder just to install that. Um, and the reason why for that is that I needed more uh, space in order to get to the rear bolt for the oil pedestal. So if you're gonna do this, I highly recommend that you do this when the motor's out of the car. If not, then you're gonna have a hard time, such as me. I mean, if you have time and patience, you can do it. I'm pretty sure there's like other cars that has like literally no space. But there is space. You just gotta make some room by removing the slave cylinder. Well, there you have it guys. Oil pedestal is now installed. Part two is gonna be OMP delete. So stay tuned for that. So this is your boy Freeman C2 and I'm out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have a tear now. <laughs>